Welcome to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal, where our goal is to change the way you practice dentistry by helping you achieve clinical, financial, and personal balance. Now, here's your host, T-Bone. And welcome back for another week. Thank you so much for tuning in weekly and for our new listeners. Thank you so much. Our numbers are slowly but surely creeping up. Our reviews are slowly but surely creeping up, but we have some more work to do. So I want to make sure that you guys help us with some of that stuff. And as always, I am joined by my lovely... You know what? No longer Fanny now, are you? I have upgraded once again. You are now my bodyguard. Yes, I'm very strong for those of you that have not seen me. That's Most a, people haven't seen me. They just know my voice. Is that, do you consider being a bodyguard an upgrade from being my fanny? Um, I mean, I don't think t- being a nanny t- requires much skill. I would think to be a Ooh, bodyguard. You just, you just, you just <laughs> hurt some people with that, okay? Because some of the people listening... I don't think we have any nannies listening. <laughs> listen, you'll be shocked. Okay. I have a strong supporting system in the nanny world out there. I bet <laughs> T-Bone's been through the nannies um, for his children. We oh, I got, you know, we had, gotta ones, do, we gotta he has do. had ones live with him. He's had ones not live with him. He's had them go live with his mother-in-law. Yeah. He, I mean, all different kinds. I gotta None do of them my, have worked. My first nanny interview is the best story ever, but we're not going to get into yeah. it today. <laughs> But I, I got, we got it, we got it, we got to do that on one of, we got to get Mona on and have an episode that just talks about how the, terrible you, the you stupidity are. Of yeah. me. Just yeah. my stupid, like the typical man, stupid stuff uh, yeah. that I do. That you've done. That I do. Yeah. Not done, yeah. even do. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I think we're um, always working on our health and fitness so I can yeah. become a better bodyguard, of course. Yeah, it's, I that's mean, why that's why. Yeah. So, you know, this week, what I want to do is we're going to bring our good friend and guest, uh, Matt Standridge, in uh, from Yates Center, Kansas. And he's going to be talking with me uh, and us all about getting health and fitness. Uh, The reason I'm bringing Matt on is Matt has gone on a journey. Many of you know him as the keto dentist, and he's gone on a journey uh, of losing 100 pounds and continuing to do that uh, without essentially starving himself and without having to literally work out and exercise his way to thinness. Uh, And no offense, but we're not thin yet or probably (laughs) never to be quite honest with you. So, so let's, uh, and, and and health is so important because anyway, Matt, why is health so important? Well, welcome to the show. First off, yeah, thank you for having me on. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to talk with you about, um, well, I mean, share. I can share my journey, but really, it's about getting other people, yeah. you know, uh, taken care of and getting them healthy and everything. And what you were alluding to earlier about health being so important, health is the driver of everything that we have. You know, there's that old adage of that we spend the middle of our life sacrificing our health to get wealth, and then at the end of our life, we spend all of our wealth trying to get a, regain our health. Right? Yeah, that's very true. That and is, that's a good one. I like that. That is. Yeah, I'm going to steal that one. Yeah. I, I've tra- I've already <laughs> trademarked it. I've called, I texted my lawyer just now, and we've trademarked that. We've taken it from Aristotle and made it mine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, um, you know, <clears throat> look, I, I'm very open and don't make a lot of uh, – Bones about and bones, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, I don't. I don't hide the fact that I'm unhealthy, overweight, and like ice cream and love peanut butter. Yeah, wow, you're good. It's only been a couple days. <laughs> well, that's because I left the peanut butter butt. <laughs> he found. Cup, he caught you. The jar the laying jar. out. Um, but the, look, here's what I notice. Okay. The most significant growth in my professional and personal career happened between 2012 and 2014. It coincided with me getting healthier. Mm-hmm. Okay? Being the healthiest. The healthiest I've been in a very long yeah. time. Okay? Right. Uh, and it wasn't that I had a six-pack. I actually went from having a keg to a six-pack of beer on my <laughs> belly. Uh, but, but I found that I had a renewed energy I was more mentally with it. I was significantly more confident in myself. And I just, I started 3D Dentist at that time. Mm -hmm. We saw some growth in our practice. We were able to have the mental energy to bring in an associate through all of that. And I found that that was the time that I really made a difference. And 
quite frankly, I find myself now at a time where I'm really feeling physically and mentally significantly lazier mm -hmm. than I've ever been. Uh, and it's concerning to me. Uh, it's concerning that I have a, uh, I'm a little bit more irritable than normal, mm -hmm. that I have a harder time getting out of bed, that I'm a little less uh, uh, efficient and, and functional at the office. Minus the efficiency, I think that's just user error. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I feel bad. I feel, I feel bloated a lot. Right. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to get off the couch. And I, I just don't want to live like that anymore, you know. And uh, it's time to do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it, so I reached out to you because I'm not willing to go running every day. I'm not willing to do some of those things. Right. So I just wanted a... You know, I, I saw somebody that did it. I, I you know what I, I don't like? I, I look at people that I consider skinny mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, I went on this journey and I have a six pack. I'm like, dude, I'm not trying to get a six pack. <laughs> right. I didn't start anywhere to get yeah. a six pack. You right. know, I'm just trying to get a little bit more energetic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So why don't, we, why don't you share where you've done, what, where you've gone through, how the keto dentist started. Yeah. And uh, kind of uh, talk, you know, now it's Sunday. Mm -hmm. You've been here for the weekend, kind of what we've done to step my path and be very frank about what you think my struggles are going to be. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and Meredith, please chime in for all the problems I have. <laughs> We just got, we just got, you know, permission. permission yeah. So we don't, we don't have to hold back now. No, so. I don't want you to hold back. Not at all. <laughs> so you bet. So um, to g give a Cliff's notes about it, I've kind of struggled with my weight my whole life. I grew up morbidly obese and all that stuff. And, um, and when you say morbidly obese, what, what does that mean? So um, not the technical definition specific right, to you. Right. So, um, you know, I was over 200 pounds by sixth grade okay. and I was over 330 pounds in the freshman year of high school. And that wasn't muscle. And that was not muscle. <laughs> um, yeah. My, my lineman coach loved me because I took up mass, but I had no real strength. Right. Okay. And so and I don't know how heavy I got because the wrestling scale oh, maxed out at 330 at the high school. Okay. So I really so you maxed. Yeah, I maxed out the scale. So I really don't know. But it was about um, I had luck um, going low carb. Atkins was kind of on a resurgence at that time. And I, so you're talking about in high school? In high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up losing um, well over 130 pounds. I got to my in lowest high in high school. I got yeah. my lowest down to 195 or so. And I stayed around 200 all through, uh, all through college. Okay. And undergrad. Undergrad. Okay. Until dental school. And then, you know, we don't have the healthiest of lifestyles in dental school. At least I didn't. No. Between and stress. Stress, yeah. lack of working out, alcohol sleep, consumption. Lack of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> but, but by the way, those are all the same things that happen to us in our practice. Exactly. Right. Combined with the fact that we make some money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would argue that We're that's not on quite, dental school budgets. Yeah. Right. I think that's a Say bigger ramen noodles. That's a bigger, I, I would argue that it's a big factor. It okay. is. Yeah. So you, you, kept, you maintained your weight for about, uh, to about 200. So you weren't skinny. Okay. Uh, but you kept your weight at about 200 uh, through, through, through most of undergrad. Mm -hmm. And then you got to dental school and you know, the stresses and everything came about. Yeah. And it was just a perfect storm of things that uh, coincided. And I just stacked the weight right back on. Did you have any mental struggles during this? Uh, you know, some depression or anything? Yeah. I mean, I was depressed. I was depressed a lot through dental school. I was just yeah. constantly stressed. And I, yeah, at dental school, I mean, was, I still. I loved my class. I made some great friends and all that stuff, but the experience itself just, I don't see it as a good experience for yeah. me. And I know some people who love that time. So yeah, yeah it's just, that's um, different strokes, but I carried that out of dental school. Then I continued to gain weight as I progressed through being a dentist and um, started off in public health and buying my first office buying a second office and all that stuff. And so just add in the stress of life and the practice ownership and all that stuff. That's what, you know, it just, it, I regained what, everything that I lost and then some. Through dental school? Oh, yeah. no, after dental school. And after. after. Dental school. Yeah. after okay. And after, yeah. Wow. So, so at your heaviest, what were you after, you know, more recently? 
Um, so I maxed out in 2000. Because the scales have gone up because yeah. people have gone yeah. up. <laughs> we, we've we gotten get bigger. heavier, so the scales, you can get a 400-pound scale for but, your bathroom. But you got, for the scales that go up higher, you gotta you can't get the ones that are made in China. because they Chinese people are very small. <laughs> <They're> tiny, <laughs> and I don't get it. They eat a lot of rice. I mean, I just don't get it. <laughs> well, genetics pay well, yeah. and we should talk about that a little bit. But yeah, yeah so you got a, you had gotten out to how much? About 360. 360, okay. Yeah. So what were some of the symptoms that you're feeling? Because typically what, what I found is there's, look, nobody suddenly, you know, nobody says, oh, I'm about to have a heart attack. I should start getting. Usually right. it's, there's a disruption that happens, right? Exactly. I get a heart attack. And then I get woken up, right? Mm -hmm. I get woke, mm -hmm. to use your millennium people <laughs> terms, right? So, so tell me, what, um, what, what, what was some? What were you feeling at that time? You know, how, right. how what was bothering? What were your disabilities from this? Yeah, I, I, I call that the pit moment mm -hmm. because people have to hit the bottom of that personal pit yeah. before they decide that they're going to make a change. And for me, my pit moment was um, in twenty fifteen. I had just took over the second practice, um, so I was now managing two offices. Um, in June, we had um, my first child, Hazel, my only child mm -hmm. as, as of right now. Uh, our daughter Hazel was born, and about three weeks later after that was my, se my dad's 75th birthday party. We threw a big surprise party for him, and of course, everybody's taking pictures. So a couple weeks later, I start seeing the pictures post to Facebook that I'm tagged in, mm -hmm. And I'm holding my newborn daughter, and I'm at the heaviest weight I've ever been, and my heart just sank. Yeah. You know. You know, it, you know, it reminds me of a photo I saw of myself in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we post our own photos, Meredith, you're the, like, I, okay. I was just talking about looking at pictures from last summer, and I was like, look, I thought I was fat then, and I was so skinny. Yeah, but it's not even that. <laughs> what, what I, that's part of it. Yeah. And, and by the way, you're not right. fat, okay? So, um, but... Listen, I, when we do social, social media, when we post our own pictures, we always take it from the right angle. Pick the best one. You know, pick Duh. the best one. But then when you get tagged in other right. people's photos, it's like they purposely, untag, untag, they untag. purposely exactly, put the worst right. ones of you. Yeah. So I remember my buddy who's passed away, and I miss him dearly. Um, he, in 2012, we had gone to a NC State football game and we're tailgating and he posted this picture of me eating a hot dog <laughs> and I looked like I had, I was like a stuffed hot dog myself. <laughs> and I literally saw that picture and I was like, that's, that's not me. Right. But because our brains see us right. differently, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like right. Meredith, you see yourself differently, correct? Right. Correct. Yeah. Do you remember that photo of me from yes. 2012? I mean, I looked like I was about to freaking well, I, explode. I didn't know you in 2012, but I remember you guys showing it yeah. to me. And then showing me where you got from there. Yeah. You know, when you were, that was probably 2014. Yeah. When it was like your best. And you felt better. You practiced better. And I don't think people, like what kind of changes did you see in your practice when you started to lose weight. Like, I don't think people look at dentistry as a physical labor job, right? right? But some of the surgeries and some of those days you're on your feet for three and four hours at the time mm. and it's physically exhausting. So to add a hundred pounds on that right. and do the surgery is a lot. Right. Have you noticed any differences? Absolutely. Um, so that's the thing where health, it really impacts people more than they know because when they're dealing with it, on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. they oftentimes don't realize how crappy they feel yeah. because that's their normal, right. right? They don't have a point of reference that's different right. from that. Versus you start getting people eating healthier, um, getting more energy, losing some weight, and just constantly feeling good. All of a sudden, the light comes on that are like, wow, I, don't, I didn't, never realized how crappy I felt right. until now that I feel better. Right. So until they get that frame of reference, they don't really know. But yeah. it, 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 it impacts everything. Right. Health impacts um, your energy and your confidence, your mental clarity, all of that stuff is going to impact everything that mm -hmm. you do, every aspect of your life, right? Yeah. It's, going to, it's not only going to impact you and how you present to yourself and your self-confidence and everything, but it's going to impact how you are as a husband or a mother or a spouse or whatever. It's going to impact 
how um, you talk to your team, how As your leader. leadership, yeah, yeah, your leadership levels of your team. What kind of um, what kind of example are you setting for your kids? What kind of example are we setting for our patients? You know, why should our patients listen to us about our health? You know, not eating candy and getting cavities. Exactly, we're, we're healthcare providers. Exactly, right. And so um, health is like the cornerstone. I see it as the cornerstone that impacts every aspect right. of our life. It's the trickle yeah. down. Yeah. It's the top level. Yeah. Like I speak to this from personal experience. It's the top level of trickle down. Yeah. Uh, look, I think, and you touched on it, and I think um, to me, the driving factor isn't what I physically look like. You know, me and my wife are too deep into it. To, to, to be able. She's, she's, in, she's not going to trade up at this point. Is that? <laughs> Listen, I would. It would no, he's not going to start over. Let me rephrase tra- that. It would be a trade down for her, clearly, okay? Okay. <laughs> clearly, it would be a trade down for her. But for me, what drove me was my mental health, okay? Mm-hmm. Yep. My depression. And, and, you know, and I often, I don't know if people how they view me, but you know, I often get people that view me as the pinnacle of dentistry in the sense that I've got it. We've got a practice that does very well. Mm -hmm. You you see, we live a great life. My Mm -hmm. wife's doing well. She's a nice looking person. We have generally speaking, pretty good kids. They're teenagers right now. So they're, (laughs) you know, a little bit here, there I'm surrounded by beautiful people. I'm surrounded by committed people in my practice and Mm -hmm. in my life. Um, they're the only ones that'll stick around (laughs) be quite honest if you but, made it this far you're yeah. committed i don't know how com- i wasn't that committed when that we saw that snake the other day yeah, do you, you remember i, yeah. I wasn't a very good bodyguard my bodyguard <laughs> decided to take care of mona and not me we but, ran and screamed and left him but i struggled with depression mm-hmm. i struggled with not feeling good about myself mm-hmm. uh and it started with what i looked at like at the mirror to myself right and it permeated to everything else yep and that that and the energy level, mm-hmm. okay? That's what drove me. I, I, could, I, I don't want to say I could care less how I look. It's certainly important to me, but it's not that important to right. me. You know, my wife accepts me for who I am. Mm. I'm, enough, I'm confident enough in myself for that. But when, it start, when, I, wake up, when I wake up regurgitating ice cream, <laughs> okay? That's disgusting. Well, well, that's what happens. Because you go get ice cream late at night. It doesn't. You know what? Irrelevant. When it happens, where it happens, <laughs> it's probably because I had two cups that day. You yeah. Know? But, but because you keep good berries in business. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But, you, you know, so let's. Okay. So we've talked about the right. importance of right. it. Yeah. Walk me through, Matt. How? How did, how did you, you made the mental mm-hmm. commitment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Walk. And, and, and uh, again, everybody listening that's listening, they have the same, we have the same challenges. Right. Mm-hmm. Our schedule, we're not in charge of our schedule. Would you agree with that, Meredith? Yeah, I think everybody knows how it happens, right? Right. But it's how to make it work. Yeah, and because our schedules are dictated for us from the moment we walk into our office, I'm no longer, I'm not in control. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it's always on me because we run a busy, every one of us runs a scheduled practice. Right. And then it's, oh, I'm booked out a few weeks. I got to get this patient in. Oh, I'll come in at seven and see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I'll stay work through lunch or I'll Mm -hmm. stay late. And all of these things add up over time. And then what happened to me was I was working early or working through lunch or sometimes working late. I get home and I was just mentally exhausted. Right. And it just was a downward spiral. Right. I mean, I was always heavy. Don't get me wrong. But um, so walk me through what you did. Okay, so for me, um, preparation is key because if we know that these things are going to happen, then it's on us to prepare for them. You know, uh, failing to uh, plan is planning to fail type thing, right? And so that's what to me is the most important. If you know you're well experienced, you know what your roadblocks are, you need to have to come up with an actionable plan to to deal with those. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so for me, like how I came across, how I did it was I had to, I knew lunch was not a guarantee. So going somewhere or, um, ordering something healthy that I don't know if is going to be available or not. I had to prepare my lunches beforehand. Okay. So let's back up for a second. Okay. Okay. So it's interesting. Okay. Uh, the first thing you talk about is food and not your exercise regimen. Right. 
Okay, why is that? Because the vast majority of our results are going to come from diet. Yeah, you can't outwork a bad diet. No, yeah. no, I get that. But, right. but what, as soon as my, my original thought to all of this was, oh, I need to exercise. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and what I keep hearing, what I experienced in 2012 wasn't that I needed to exercise. Yes, movement. Yeah. And I want to redefine exercise yeah. a little bit. Movement is important. Yes. But diet control is significantly more right. important. Yeah. And you're a learned person about all of this stuff. How, how, give me the kind of the importance difference between diet and exercise in terms of the results that you can get. Right. So diet is going to drive 80% of your results. Right. Okay. Diet is going to drive 80% of your results. Exercise and movement will constitute maybe 10% of your results. And the other 10% is going to come for a combination from sleep, from stress management, all that stuff. But really diet is the largest driver for results. And people, if people can lose 20, 50, 100 pounds or more without, they've done studies of bedridden patients have lost hundreds of pounds simply by changing their diet and they're not moving at okay. all. But so diet is the biggest thing that is going to move the needle as far as results. So that's, that's where I start with everybody. Right, so, so tell me, so what, what, give me more specifics on the diet. Okay. So diet really, and that's a bad word by the way, but diet. Yeah. 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 It food was, plan. Yeah. Food plan. What was your practical way eating, of, yeah, lifestyle. Way of eating, you know, yeah. all that stuff. Wait, whatever. Lifestyle. So, yeah. Yeah. And so um, for me, it's really about focusing on nutrient dense foods, whole foods, getting rid of any of the processed stuff, the empty calories, the yeah. stuff that um, doesn't fill like, us up. Sugar. Mm -hmm. Ice cream. Pr ice cream. Why do you keep uh, saying ice cream? Because you love ice cream. You know what? <laughs> I'll give ice cream up. Just give me have Oreos now. No, that's just as bad. You get Oreos in your ice cream. <laughs> 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 I got ice cream with you last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Marley's sticking up for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lay off. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, sugars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sug uh, sugars, refined carbohydrates. Well, refined carbohydrates. What does that mean? Yeah. Chips, um, cakes, Bread. cookies. Brownies? Uh, brownies. <laughs> for sure. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And wipe the so, away. so, all right. So, all right, Matt. Do I have to give this stuff up? Um. Most people do, at least for a time, because okay. it's, it's become habitual eating, and we are built off of our habits. We, you got this way. I got hey, this hey, way. Hey, hey. Um, <laughs> we got this way through our habits. Not by eating zucchini. Right. And so... I'll make you some zoodles. <laughs> and so we have to redefine our habits. Okay. And, um, and like I said... A lot of this, um, a lot of this, we have to just get out of our life for a while. This whole everything in moderation that people like to tout about, it doesn't work for the vast majority of people. It just doesn't. You know, I've worked with um, coaching uh, programs that have coached thousands of people, and I've been able to see what works. And abstinence for the vast majority of people are going to do better. Now, that's not to say you can never have a piece of birthday cake again or you can't start to reintroduce some of these things eventually in a healthy manner at some point. But when you have had a, a daily habitual um, process of getting the, getting the ice cream, getting the Oreos or whatever, we have to break that for a good amount of time. And what does good amount of time mean, you think? It really depends for the person. Um, studies show at least 60 days. They say 30 to 60 days create a habit in anything, like exercise mm -hmm. or, you know, just life. Right. So I would assume that would be and, the same for food. And the studies actually suggest um, the average was 66 days. It could be as er, as little as 14. It could be as many as 144. But the average that works with most coaching programs is at least 60 days. So for what, you're, what I'm hearing is that for 60 days, I need to give up this stuff mm -hmm. to break my desire. Right. And breaks the habit. It, you're, right. you're, 
it's always going to be a desire. You have to think of it as I almost... I don't desire Coke anymore. Right. Or sodas. I mean, not Coke. Right, sodas. yeah. <laughs> sodas. Not, not, not booger sugar, yeah, but yeah. like... <laughs> Whatever that is, but yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know... Uh, Okay. All right. So, so we keep going. We had to cut out sugars. Yeah. yeah. Refined carbohydrates. Yeah. What else do we have? Anything else? Yeah. So basically why I gravitate to low carb and we've talked about this before. I can look at somebody's body type and how they're carrying weight and see like if they're insulin resistant or not. And are you type two diabetic? Type is that two right? Diabetic, yeah. So type two diabetes is insulin resistance. Resistance, That's yeah. all there is to it. And there are, um, basically, There are basically three ways to treat insulin resistance that have been shown in the science. And that is um, something like gastric bypass, surgical induced fasting. There is very low calorie diets for extended periods of time. We're talking under 800 Mm -hmm. calories for weeks on end or low carbohydrate diets. And so out of those three, what sounds what sounds doable for you? Well, I, I the low carbohydrate diet yeah. without yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I, I talk about keto, which is ultimately at its purest form, very, very low carbohydrate diet. I don't think that's needed for everybody. I think the vast majority of people can uh can benefit from low carb, but that's simply going to be from eliminating BS foods like sugars, cookies. Cakes, pastas, you know, that type of stuff. And focusing. Wraps. wraps. (laughs) Bread, wraps. And focusing. no problem. I I can give up the wraps. Yeah. No problem. And focusing more on nutrient-dense food. All right. Um, So we went shopping. Right. Okay. So talk to me about that. Uh, What what did you notice about my tendencies of what I wanted to buy? Let's take the sugars and stuff out of it. I mean, I get it. I want to have Captain Crunch cereal. Mm -hmm. And ice cream mm-hmm. aisle and stuff like that, but what are the, I noticed that there are some significant differences that we could make in our grocery patterns mm-hmm. uh, that would uh, make a difference. Right. Uh, like I, you know, I was telling Meredith actually the first step for me because I begged for help. I think that's an important thing that we should yeah, talk about. I was going to mention is, that um, too. Is the, the support. support system? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking that too. I've wanted to do this pre-COVID or any. I've been wanting to do it for a long yeah. time, mm-hmm. but and 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 I. I really take offense when people say you should have the willpower to, mm-hmm. to not do it. But, you know, and I think you use the example where you can't put an alcoholic in, in an alcoholic environment. Right. right. So you can't put a sugar eater right. into a sugar environment. Exactly. And I think the day that it was very much easier for me is I last, or last weekend I asked Meredith and my wife, Mona, to go through the house and just basically get rid of everything. Mm-hmm. Talk yeah. to me about that, Meredith. So... Your kids eat a lot of sugar. Yeah, because I eat a lot of sugar. Yeah, so we went through and cleaned everything out and went and bought groceries. Yeah. Uh, I then texted Matt and asked him, what should I buy for you guys this weekend? And the funny thing is the list he sent me, we had already bought most of that, besides the meats and stuff, yeah. which they had eaten that week. Um, but the veggies, the low carb, that kind of thing, because we had done this in the office before, yeah. probably like a year and a half ago. And Megan and I and a couple of the girls in the office had lost a bunch of weight and we did it together. And I think even then you weren't even noticing it, but you were eating better than too. And because we were right. And so the people around you weren't eating cookies and cakes. And we were telling people not to bring them in because we didn't want them. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to be around people eating cookies. So I would ask, they're bad people. I would ask the girls not to go in your office and eat them. right? Right. And they would say, Oh, well he can, he needs to have the willpower. And I'm like, well, just don't do it. Just yeah. eat it in your own office. And, and the, you know, it's interesting. If I go back to 2012, is I started that, you're about right, yeah. a month, two months. And then then I had the, like you saw this weekend, right. I, I didn't eat the cookies that were out. No. And they're mm-hmm. 100%, regardless of how bad you say they yeah. were, Meredith, I would have eaten <laughs> the cookies, okay? I try to tell them when things are, I'm like, they're not good. Don't worry. Yeah. They taste good. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm pure like, no, sugar. they you don't. Put pure sugar out there. Exactly. I'll eat it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, so so talk to me more about the keto based diet, okay? Mm-hmm. Specifically, the meal prep, meal eating. What 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 does a typical day look like for you on the eating side of things? Yeah, so I tell the the people that have the most success with low carb keto, whatever, is simplicity. Okay. Because if you make it overly complicated and complex and time consuming and all that stuff, um, you're kind of setting yourself up for fail, especially if you're like us. And busy, busy. Mm-hmm. we're just busy. Everybody's busy. 
And so if you make it overly complicated more than you need it to, then you're, you're asking, you're asking for trouble. Okay. And so I keep it super simple. You know, I tell my folks, pick a meat, pick a veggie or two, and that's it. You know, a little oil to cook with or whatever, but that's it. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. And you can, you can, uh, attest that the meals that we ha- have had this weekend were fairly simple, yeah, absolutely. but they've been delicious. They've been pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't use the word delicious. Oh, they've, been, you, they've been very, they've been you, good. You ate the hell out of those Brussels sprouts. Look, I'm not For saying. For breakfast, listen, he is, he likes biscuits. I would have never thought he came in today and he's like, I had Brussels sprouts for breakfast. I'm for like, breakfast. what? <laughs> well, I, look, man, I, I'm always an honest person, okay? Mm. Delicious to me would be pasta, pizza, Thai yeah. food, right. Right. stuff like that. But However, how about this? It wasn't untasty. Right. Okay. I ate plenty of it. I didn't like feel like I was forcing myself to eat it. Right. Uh, and it, w- it was pretty simple to make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. And yeah. so you know, I, I went grocery shopping. Something I don't normally do. I cooked a little bit. Something I don't normally do. Um, but what I did notice was with a little bit of simplicity. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I think this is part of the challenge for busy people is, and we're all busy, no matter how how busy we don't think we are, we're mentally busy. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if we own a practice, we're thinking about it nonstop. If we have kids, we're thinking about them. If we have spouses, we're thinking about them. Um, Is is prepare to succeed. And that preparation is... Keep your meals simple. Yeah. Don't buy anything extra. Right. And then maybe spend one hour chopping and prepping. Yep. Put everything in tubs or whatever you got to do. And then make it to where cooking is as simple as possible. Yes. And then, you know, you put it, like we came home, literally we used one pan. Mm -hmm. We put the vegetables in there, cooked them, put the meats in there, cooked them, and then literally took that pan, put it on the table and ate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that was pretty simple to me. Uh, so, so, uh, and, and then like, uh, so for example, um, uh, so let's say you came Wednesday night. So Thursday we ate chicken, tuna, mm-hmm. uh, and Brussels sprouts, I believe. Oh, no, no. Sorry. And, bell peppers and, and onions. Bell peppers and onions. Yeah. And they all tasted pretty good. Right. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't bland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't like eating cardboard. It no, wasn't. And then it was... yeah, I was able to put some hot sauce on it. We had good salt mm-hmm. and pepper on it. Uh-huh. Uh, so it was good. So that was a good, easy meal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and then Friday night, I believe we had, um, Trump. no, no, I think we had uh, chicken and, uh, what do we have on Friday night? No, we it, it's Friday night. We had shrimp. We Wait, had shrimp oh, that was last Brussels. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was shrimp. Yeah. We, had, yeah. we had shrimp, which is, tasted great. And zucchini. Zucchini, Brussels sprouts, bell peppers, and onions. Uh-huh. And then tonight, we're going to eat out, and we're going to go to the hibachi place and just get a plate no of rice. meat and uh, veggies. And veggies. Yeah. It's very easy. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. so so uh, so that does that sound like a pretty good plan? Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's the thing. If you're going to go low-carb, um, don't make it super simple or don't make it super complicated in the fact that just pick a meat, pick a veggie or two and you're done. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. One thing that you had mentioned to me this weekend was, um, I had heard you over mentioning is, is, um, I've heard with keto that you can eat all the fat and cheese mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. butters that you want because that's all keto friendly, right. mm-hmm. but there's some, there's some risk in that. So talk to us about that. Right. So. You know, when we first start keto, you can you can lose a lot of weight still eating extra fat and stuff like that because your body's not used to burning its fat. Mm-hmm. We've been feeding it glucose. We've been feeding it sugar for years on end. So that's what it's used to burning. Yeah. When we reduce our sugar intake and all of a sudden we burn through our sugar stores and the body is has never really had to burn its own fat for fuel. And so it's very inefficient. It's like a gas guzzler truck and it's just, it it starts burning fat, but very inefficiently. So we can get away with this higher fat content because it's just being, it's just being excreted, right? It's being, because the body's not used to it. The body as an adaptive mechanism, that's how we survived and became, you know, Mm -hmm. apex predator of the world is... Um, our bodies do learn and become efficient with that fuel. And all of a sudden, you can't get away with the extra butters. Two the ex- spoons of butter. <laughs> right, exactly. Our, our bodies <laughs> adapt. And so eventually, calories do start to matter again. Okay. okay? Yeah. 
And so that's why we can't, um, I've seen so many people and I did this myself when I started keto, I lost 30 pounds really quickly. Um, and I was doing this kind of higher fat version, butters, cheeses, that type of stuff. And then I plateaued out really quick. And, and okay. So I want to take that. That's good. See, see, look, I, I think again, I, I'm not an expert, mm. you know, I'm not telling people how to do it, but I'm just saying from my mindset Every time a diet has been shoved into me, Mm -hmm. okay, it has been zero to 100 day one. Right. Okay. And it's, to me, it's a recipe for failure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and so right now what I'm liking is that I can put some butters on there. I can put some cheeses on there, but I've got a mindset that right now, until I start seeing that plateau, I can continue to do that to a certain degree, mm. and then I got to start cutting that out as well. Right. And hopefully, I have less. And and the thing to me is is seeing some results. Mm-hmm. Like even in this one week, I've seen some yeah. results. I mm-hmm. feel better, less, uh, less way less bloated. Uh-huh. I mean, you've only heard me burp like once or twice yeah. the entire time. Uh, I've seen a difference on the scale. Right. You know, so once you see some of the yeah. results, that's so important to success is seeing the results mm-hmm. uh, and then not also feeling starved. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So, so I, you know, not feeling deprived is probably mm-hmm. the better word mm-hmm. yeah. that I, wa- I would say. And so seeing some results, not feeling deprived, it begets the next step. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the next step after you say, okay, we can do butters and cheeses mm-hmm. in the, in, you know, along with the keto, but then the next step is then you're going to have to start cutting some of those out. Yeah. Once you start, once you start losing weight and your body uh, starts to adapt, you're going to have to get to the point that if you if your goal is still more weight loss and stuff like that, you may, instead of going out and getting the ribeye, you might have to get the sirloin. You okay. know, um, you might have to get the fish or the chicken breast instead of chicken. Wait, wait, wait. Less Rib- fatty. What is ribeye and sirloin? There's only one beef. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the filet <laughs> mignon. <laughs> or the too. Chateau Briand. <laughs> okay. Outside of Me that, too. no staking. You ask my 10 yeah. year old son and he will tell you the only beef that wagyu. exists is Wagyu. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's it. Well, well, we'll we'll get you guys out to cattle country sometime uh, out in Kansas, and you know, broaden your horizons a little bit. Well, you know, I went to school in Kansas City, so I'm very familiar with yeah. Hereford beef, yeah, yeah, and all of that stuff. So there you yeah. go. Okay, so once you start with the food mm-hmm. and you start moving, mm-hmm. and then you kind of hit a plateau, mm-hmm. I think that's when you can incorporate more exercise, right. maybe more than our 20 minute mile walks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, and, and see, again, and I'm thank you for right. bringing it up, okay? Again, I think this is why I've struggled to start. Mm-hmm. Okay, again, I'm not trying right. to not take responsibility, right. but, yes, it's a 20-minute mile right, right now. But that's that's the best I've got. Yeah, <laughs> okay. we're moving. Well, let's um, give ourselves a little bit. Is so it, I've gotten to 1930. Our gym's closed. I don't, gym, give, I don't give two shits if no, the gyms are closed. No, because you know? if the gym was open, we would be we would be there. Yeah, we'd be doing something, but yeah. nonetheless, look, a walk works. Yeah, it's okay? a three mile walk. So let's talk about exercise right. versus movement. Right. Okay. So let, let's talk about that. Yeah. So when we when we look at humans and how we're kind of evolved to be, um, like our ancestors, for example, we got a lot of low level movement. They did a lot of walking. They they just had movement built into their day: hunting, gathering, tracking, all that stuff, um, working, and so. Uh, walking is one of the best, that's like the ideal, if you think of a, things built on a pyramid of movement, low level movement, like walking should be like the foundation. Wait, but do you know how thin we would be if we had to hunt for our own food? <laughs> Maybe I we should to, just go wait, wait. I have to hunt for my food right now. You have to hunt in the cabinets. <laughs> I have to hunt for my ice cream. In the cream grocery because store. Because it's not existent. In the, so in the office the other day, um, I had gotten him a salad for lunch. I wasn't back yet. And I walk in and he has a Starbucks cup lid full of peanut butter. And we said, where did you get that? And he said, I went to the grocery store. And we said, no, you didn't. He said, I went and got it myself. And I said, in the cabinet? And he's like, yeah, somebody went to the grocery store. <laughs> it wasn't The cabinet his. is my grocery he store. He says going to the cabinet and searching for food is the same as going to the grocery that's store. That's modern day hunter and gathering yeah. right yeah. there. That's, <laughs> right. That's, in the break room. Wait, number one, that's. RPP, rich people problems, and first world problems. Okay? <laughs> For sure. And then we took it away. He didn't want us to throw it away because that was wasteful. Yeah, we we did take it away and gave him a salad instead. 
Yeah. So, okay. So, so, so walking th- is the first step. Right. Yeah. Wa- walking in um, low so, level stuff like um, gentle uh, bike riding during the summer, going mm-hmm. out with your family and riding a bike. I mean, no, no, no offense. In your bedroom. Yeah, I'm not trying to be, <laughs> I'm not trying to be um, disrespectful here or anything. Okay. Because I'm not that different from you. But when you're 350, I'm not 350 pounds now, right now, but when you're 350 pounds, going out and running isn't really... No. <laughs> it's <laughs> realistic. No. Isn't it really exactly. realistic, okay? Exactly. Because number one, look, I'm a competitive person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I played competitive in, tennis. In Uno. I'm competitive in all things <laughs> in my life, okay? Right. Yeah. So when, when I got out and I can't run or I can't, I can't, I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. And it's not because I'm not willing, I, I just... I give in because I don't want to fail. And to me, failing is not doing an eight-minute mile or mm-hmm. not being able to do three miles at once mm-hmm. without stopping. You know, those are the things to me. And it's not because, you know, it's it just, it's so hard. So having a plan that is st- just getting a start by a start plan. Right. You know, I'm tired of people telling me that, oh, you've got to do it all the way in. You got to, like, dude, I just want to walk. I want to eat better. I want to get some results. I want to go to step two. Right. I want to get some results. I want to go to step three. Mm-hmm. Get some results, and 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 maybe I'll use medications at some point to help me. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know, you know. Um, but uh, I, I just I just want to feel better, you know. And and I want to look better, feel better. I want to have some of the drives that I had before, mentally, physically, mm-hmm. sexually, all of those <laughs> things. You know, they're they're important things, right? That we just you know that not enough people talk about or not enough people share about. Uh, and, and it affects your practice, it affects your business, it affects your personal life. Mm-hmm. Uh, because what happens at home, then, you know, it's this vicious circle. Yeah. It's an absolute vicious circle that right. we all feel, you know. Like, I know it affects Meredith because she says something about it every once in a while, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty much every day. Mm-hmm. She makes this comment, or oh, I was this, or I was mm-hmm. that, or I've got to do this. So I know that's affecting somebody, right? right? Yeah, we may say jokingly or whatever it is, but it affects us up here so it permeates in everything we do. Right. You know, maybe, maybe you don't feel comfortable getting in front of people and talking. Right. You know, maybe you don't feel fun, comfortable standing in front of a patient and presenting a case. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you don't feel comfortable leading your team. Right. You know, maybe you, maybe you don't hire an associate who's better looking than you or more fit than you. Mm-hmm. You know, all of these things cross your mind because of it. Or right. maybe you feel like that kept me from getting my job. You know, mm-hmm. any number of things. So, yeah. you know, we, we've got to do it for the, some of the right reasons as well. And and what you talked about, you know, that competitive and almost like that perfection. Mm-hmm. I think dental professionals in general are kind of perfectionists, mm-hmm. right? Or I kind of like, at least hope so. No, we are. Mm-hmm. And, and so um, I wouldn't want to go to anybody who wasn't. And so... Um, we let that hang up and um, perfect becomes the enemy of progress, right? Progress, not perfection, right? right? And so like what you said, starting somewhere, getting somewhere, yeah, I don't expect somebody 350 pounds to start committing to like P90X on day one and doing, you know, (laughs) squat jump, jumping jacks. That's funny you said that because we found an article one time, the girls and I, and in the office and we sent it to T-Bone. It said, what happens to your body in 30 days of doing 30 burpees uh-huh. in 30 days? There's 30 burpees every day for 30 days. Uh-huh. And he said, you'll have to call an ambulance the first day. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's like, I can't do 30 burpees right now. Yeah, no doubt. Right? Yeah, I wouldn't expect anybody to. Yeah. It just, I think, look, I think what happens is, and I'm not, I'm not saying anything personally to you, yeah. Meredith. Or, or anybody else, but I think when people don't have a supportive or understanding personality to this, mm-hmm. it affects you. Mm-hmm. Like when people say, all you got to do is 30 burpees. Like, I can't freaking right. do it. <laughs> right. Okay. I just can't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and so that makes me never want to start. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and, th- and that I think is the part of the problem is, yeah. is we have to become self-conscious about the words we say. Mm-hmm. Okay, because yes, Meredith, you can do thirty burpees, but you're not in my. You're not right. You're, you're not. Double. And then, and then we thought about it, and we said, "Well, we'll work our way up." And he's like, "No, you guys, can, you know." And he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want to hold us back. Mm-hmm. And we're like, "We'll work our way up. We'll work our way up. We'll do a few every day." Mm-hmm. You know. And but if it's instead like, we had started with working from five to right, thirty, right? Then he would have said yes. Then I would have said yes. Right. right. 
you know? And right. I think, and, and part of it, and this will lead into the last yeah. topic, is part of it is having realistic plan of action. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's certainly part of it. And the other part of it, I think that is the most important part, by the way, in my opinion, is a support. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I'm committed to this now, right. whether I want to be or yeah. not, because one, I've talked about on the podcast. Right. Yeah. Two, I've involved a third party that I don't pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You know what I mean? In terms of like Meredith's my employee. And at the end mm -hmm. of the day, if I want to lick Oreo cookies, that, it's not only so much. I you have can ripped do. cookies out of his mouth. I'm not really <laughs> sure. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's so it's that. But now. I feel like I've got a partner in this. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it motivates you a little bit more because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're working together. And what kind of person are you if you're not doing the same things you right. tell me to do? Lead by example. Right. Exactly. So how important is support and how do you typically suggest people do all of that? And, and you know. I liked one thing Matt said the other day, yesterday, I guess. He said he's seen people succeed with absolutely no support. Um, no motivation. I mean, nobody around him to support him. And he's seen people with all the support in the world fail right. because they right use now. them against, well, and then they use them against themselves kind mm -hmm. of where they talk their helper or whoever it is into bringing them mm -hmm. food. Right. Yeah. But yeah. you can't talk me into bringing you cookies, but you might could talk Joaquina into bringing you right. cookies. She would do whatever you say. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So oh. I think that was really good too. How, how important was support for you? So support was very important to me because um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm an, I'm an emotional, I'm a, like a stress eater, stress drinker, and all of that stuff. And so we talk about alcohol. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. And so, um, and so for me, like if I, if my family was stressing me out more, then that would just even compound, um, compound things. And I'm the type of person that I don't really, um, I'm better now, but starting out. I couldn't have the chocolates or the peanut butters or the cakes or you know the cookies or stuff in the house, or at least I'd better not know. Well, about good them. news, we don't have peanut butter in the house anymore because either. he ate it all. <laughs> it's irrelevant why it's gone. Have you seen the thing where it's like I'm going to start a diet tomorrow, so that means I have to eat all the food in the house right. today. <laughs> and so, um, and so for me, luckily my my wife was very very supportive yeah. of me and um, completely understood of what I needed to do. Now, not everybody has that. And sure. that, that does make it difficult. It doesn't make it impossible. I've seen it like, it can't be the excuse. It can't be the excuse. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Ultimately, the only person that is going to drive, whether we're successful or not is, is us. Cause yeah. nobody's force feeding this stuff through our mouth. Nobody's making us chew it. You know, we're, yeah. but the it's only hard ones. to watch someone else eat Chick-fil-A. Exactly. And you have to eat a salad. So, so having that support system in place right. is very, very beneficial. But I mm -hmm. think part of that support system is giving people permission mm -hmm. and giving them I don't want to say an absoluteness, but but giving them a hey, listen, I need you to hold me accountable. Yes, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like Mer I know Meredith will easily do it because her personality is that way. But some of my team members aren't that way, right. and it's not they want bad for me. Right, they no. just because I'm going to give the pushback. I'm like, oh, can I just have one? Please? Yeah, and my wife's a little bit like that, mm -hmm. you know, um, and because she, you know, she's a pleaser and all of that stuff. And so, but I want I, I want I went to the office. I said, listen, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm committed to it. And I need, I need your, I mean, it's a, it's a plea for help to a certain degree, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. It's, I need your help. Yeah. And that help means that regardless that I pay you, that I'm your boss or whatever right. it is, we cannot allow me to do this. Mm -hmm. And also it means that we're going to have a shared sacrifice. Right. And that shared sacrifice means that until I'm to a point where I can control myself, mm -hmm. That also means that we we can't put me in that environment. Right. Well, just much. don't do it in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, there's been times where people were trying to get brownie points and would put M and M's on your desk, yeah. and I would just take them away before you even saw them. You yeah. never even knew they were there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and let me ask you this. I mean, if you had if you were supporting a a, um, a team member that had an addiction issue, they went and got helped. Uh, they went to like a rehab clinic, and they come back. Would you have a happy hour Party, every right. day mm -mm. in your staff right. lounge? No. Uh, no. Yeah. Because you're setting them up to fail. Right. And so you're not going to do that because you care about them. Yeah. And so 
Um, it's Food just, is an addiction. Yeah. Food it is. can be an addictor. For it, sure. We are so stressed in our lives, and, I, and I'll actually talk to the camera on this one, because we're so stressed in our lives, and we social media, we're, we're stretched too thin, whatever it is that we feel like we have to be perfect. We should feel like we have to be happy all the time, all of that stuff. And so here's the thing. We sedate ourselves. We, we have a chronic sedation, um, in, in society today. We sedate ourselves with the food we eat. We sedate ourselves with drugs and alcohol. We sedate ourselves with Netflix or Amazon Prime or impulse purchases. All of these are forms of sedation. And food absolutely is a form of sedation. And we need to learn to recognize that. We need to learn to recognize that in our own behaviors because until we acknowledge that and recognize it, nothing's going to change. Yeah. Yeah, so you, look, you, you keep look, looking for that satisfaction. Exactly. So you gotta you yeah. gotta look inwards and really do a self evaluation of why do I do this and is it serving my needs the way that I think it is? Yeah. Well, here's what I think we should do. Okay. So we have our Facebook group, Dental Business and Clinical Excellence. Mm-hmm. I think um, Matt, you, I'm gonna ask you a favor. Okay. Okay. I want us to have a commitment between me and you. Okay that we will do a weekly check-in on each other. Okay. We can post some basic stats. Cool. And that we can help hold each other accountable because I think accountability is key. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to disappoint you, and um, I don't want to disappoint other people. Mm -hmm. And for those listening, join our Facebook group. Yeah. Come Join in on the post. Yeah, let's talk about it. Encourage me. Doing it all together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if you're not trying to lose weight because you're, quote-unquote, skinny and perfect. (laughs) Like Meredith. (laughs) Meredith. No. (laughs) But, um, you know, uh, encourage people, right. you know, and, and let's, let's do it. And, and for me, again, I want to be very clear. It is not about skinny for me. Right. It mm-hmm. is because number one, that is never yeah. going to happen in my life. Right. Okay. Uh, in order, I quite frankly, I don't think I want it. I just want to feel exactly. better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's it. I want to feel better. I want to feel more confident. Mm-hmm. I want to be all of those things. I want to be more, I want to have better performance at the office. I Mm -hmm. want to have better performance at home. Uh, I want to have all of those things. Uh, And uh, so to me, that's it. If I, if I don't lose weight, but I get those things, uh, if I don't develop muscles, but I get, you know, the happiness that comes from some of those things, I'm cool with it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I don't have a goal of a hundred pounds or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. My goal right now is feel better. My goal right now is I need to make progress. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And my goal, okay, or what I'm trying to do is by Dense Fly Serona World, October, I want to have lost 20 to 30 pounds. Cool. Okay. And mm-hmm. so, so. Totally that, doable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to say it's, one it's month. It's not starvation different. diets. Yeah, no. so it's not crash dieting or anything. Yeah, it's you know, very I, doable. I, very doable because I'm yeah. realistic. I'm not going to go yeah. starve my, because all it's going to do is come right back yes. on. Right. If I do that. Yeah. So, yeah. so I want to do that. And then, uh, you know, hopefully. I'm confident that we can make it happen, but I need help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and you listening, you're part right. of that help and I'm part of your help. Mm-hmm. And, um, we just need each other. So a Facebook group to help it. We can ask about meals. We can ask about everything because I think like we mentioned earlier, your, your health, physical and emotional is part of running a good business and doing great dentistry mm. and having a great life. Absolutely. Uh, so I want us all to do that. So Matt, thank you. Thank you. Uh, how can people get in touch with you? Um, you can find me on Facebook. Um, you can you can shoot me uh, you can shoot me an email at uh, ketodontist k e t o dentist at gmail dot com. Um, but yeah, what do you do with ketodontists? You provide coaching for people and stuff? Um, not so much right now uh, anymore because I'm I'm just really focused on. Um, but if people want help, you're happy to help them. But yeah, getting started, like yeah. I don't I don't do the ongoing sure. coaching, like the weekly check ins yeah. and blah, blah blah blah. But you know, shoot me a message and just let me know how I can help you, and I can at least help get you started. Yeah. And yeah. that's Especially that was important. That was really helpful. Dennis and yeah. the community. Yeah. That was really yeah. helpful for me. Yeah, because you know it's one thing. To get, again, I don't want to belabor the point. It's one thing to get help from somebody who yeah. doesn't have a job or their job is this. Right. Versus, that's all they do is work out all day. Right, you know, right. Well, that's the out. perception I have right. of them, right? You know, you know so, um, yeah, it, it's great. 
And I think we've made good movements. I mean, we have changed T-Bone's work schedule to allow yeah. for time in the morning mm -hmm. to work out. When I worked in the office, I went to the gym every single day after work. I mm -hmm. had a schedule. Mm -hmm. I did it every single day. I never missed. Then when I changed jobs, I didn't have that schedule, right. and it kind of just went away. Yeah. So we've made that schedule where we go every. We will be going every morning. Once the gym's open, doing back the up. gym right. or a walk or something. Yeah. Every single morning. Yeah. So. And and you have to be clear about your intentions. And mm -hmm. like I said, we are we are the sum of our habits. Yeah. And we are the sum of our actions. So we have to be intentional about how yeah. we set that up. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think we're set up for success. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Don't forget to leave us reviews, share our stuff, and join our Facebook group. Take care. Thanks so much for listening to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal. Remember to keep striving for excellence, and we'll catch you on the next episode.